It's been nearly a year since the standard gauge railway started operating in Kenya, linking Mombasa with the capital city Nairobi. Almost a million people have so far used the train. Both the port and railway form part of China's Belt and Road Initiative that aims to connect much of the world. The Chinese built railway is Kenya's largest ever infrastructure project. It's reduced the traveling time between the two cities from 12 hours to just four. Kenya's president Uhuru Kenyatta is among those who have used the train. I actually feel grand. I think it's wonderful. A new experience and an experience that will be available for all our Kenyans at an affordable price. For Kenya though, the SGR does not end here. The construction of the second phase is currently underway. And for the entire region, that's just the beginning. The SGR will eventually link up to the entire region, making it easier for landlocked countries to get their goods out to Mombasa. Uganda is already at an advanced stage to build the track. Tanzania, Rwanda and South Sudan are all set to benefit. Back on the train, for passengers, cutting both time and cost has been well worth it. You got to see wildlife. It's a new thing in Kenya. We're excited. We are not stuck in traffic. It's my first time on a train, actually, and it's a good first impression. The fares are low and also the time. The time. Uh, previously, we used to travel almost eight hours or ten hours, spend the whole day. But now, four hours or four and a half hours, you're in Mombasa. Well, half the world away and traveling almost three times faster. We are in China, where the funding for the SGR came from. Here, technology takes a quantum leap on the Beijing to Shanghai high-speed rail. From Nairobi to Mombasa, it takes a leisurely four and a half hours to cover 480 kilometers. On this train, we'll cover 1,400 kilometers in roughly the same time. Okay, so this is a great look for Kenya. They finally... Well, not finally, it's, more, it's almost a year now since they've been active, the, the, the cooperation between them and China. I think this project costs a little over seven billion, but this money will be made back in known time, so it's not an issue for the, um, the Kenyan government. And also, this is not only going to benefit Kenya, it's going to benefit Rwanda, Tanzania, South Sudan, and um, Uganda. Uganda almost finished with the train track, so it link up everything. And also, this will connect Kenya to the Horn of Africa. For those who know what the the, the the horn of Africa is, it's it's a shape the 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 the, the it's shaped like a horn. The the the, the landmass is shaped uh, like a horn, which consists of Ethiopia, Somalia. I'm missing. I'm missing one. When I remember, I'll get back to that. Um. So this also connect connect also connected the um the two cities of Kenya, which is Nairobi. Mombasa, which is normally like an 8 to 12 hours trip, depending on traffic. So this will alleviate traffic because you have more people taking the train, so you have less vehicles on the road. And it's a four, it's from 8 to 12 hours cut down to 4 hours. So you imagine that relief that it will bring to the citizens of, of Kenya. Imagine you have to travel from one city to the next city, 8 to 12 hours. That's almost a full day travel for just going to a city. But now you can cut that in less than half and this also connected uh, connect Kenya to to China which is a three day travel but this travel is cut down to 12 hours okay and it's a it's a great look because I this will gonna help because the Horn of Africa is like a main shipping route so imagine you won't have to get your products from from um, Ethiopia or from um, um, what other country name would that in the Horn of Africa? Somalia. You can just throw it on the train. You get this travel between a couple of hours you reach in Kenya or the big cities, Nairobi or um, Mombasa. Also, imagine, as, as, as I said earlier, um, Rwanda will benefit, um, Tanzania is going to benefit, so goods are going to be more easier to move, more cheaper, so this will also lessen the cost of goods in, the, in this area. And also it will help with people who don't have much money to travel, to go that guy to travel. 12 hours, it's going to take some money, but imagine they cut that into 
four hours and just pay one money and boom you reach you can make one trip in a day back and forth no problem but without the train tracks they told it to take a two to three day trip and not only that this is why the continent will always accept and work with the chinese because they elevate normal regular regular everyday citizens lives so this is a, a, a um a, a, like a giant a ginormous leap for traveling for that part of africa so for people who are saying the chinese the, um is taking over africa in a good way yes and i also learned that the the um the operators of the train are kenyan and they are women and they actually go to went to china and learn the language so now they, these train operators are black and they speak mandarin which is a brilliant thing so let's come to the video before i finish the fushin chinese for rejuvenation travels at 350 kilometers per hour making it the fastest train in the world launched just last year it's the first bullet train entirely designed and built by Chinese engineers. The train has all the elements of sophistication, free Wi-Fi, an advanced onboard monitoring system. It can also run at slower speeds in case of an emergency or abnormal conditions. The Fuxin has heralded in a new era for high-speed rail travel and is expected to boost the Chinese economy. Wang Chuanlin was involved in the construction of the Yaji Railways. Africa's first electrified railway connecting Ethiopia and Djibouti, which was launched in 2016. The railways were constructed entirely by Chinese expertise. The route cut travel times from Ethiopia's capital Addis Ababa to Djibouti to just 12 hours, down from three days. After the opening of the Mombasa-Nairobi Railway and the Yaji Railway, traffic conditions in the area have been greatly improved making it more convenient for people to travel. It has boosted local economic development, enhanced local employment, and in particular, the skill levels of African personnel has improved. China has up to 22,000 kilometers of rail track. That's 60% of the world's total. And the government wants to do more by building more high-speed railways, not just in China, but all over the world. With the gradual development and improvement of China's high-speed railway network, the introduction of these railways will become more and more prevalent in other countries because the high-speed rail has shortened the length of travel time, changed the way people travel, and helped develop the region economically. For China, though, it's not just about speeding rail technology into the future, but also about rejuvenating Africa. So, yes, yeah, so here's the we are. China has the fastest world bullet train in the world. <clears throat> Sorry. So you see, it's a 12-hour trip from China to Kenya. That's a three-day trip normally. And so it's, you can imagine that amount of money will be saved on traveling. Mm -hmm. And not only this, this is a, um, a modern train, bullet train. It's of all the amenities. You have Wi-Fi, AC, proper seating. Everything about this train is awesome. And they are expanding, so they want to connect. Imagine they are trying to connect the entire continent. So this will alleviate shipping on a mass scale. So you know who's going to be this, uh, not uh, who's going to be mad and angry and push back on, on projects like these? The West, the EU. Why? Majority of these ginormous shipping companies that's using the heart of Africa shipped way, these companies are owned by Westerners and Europeans. They are the ones that benefiting from from um from bringing in products to the continent. So of course they're gonna be pushing back and say the Chinese is here, setting dead traps. They don't, the Chinese don't work with the Chinese and this and that. But this is hurting these these Westerners' pockets because. The train, instead of using a shipping, um, shipping from China or, or shipping from, from, from Somalia or from Ethiopia and coming bringing it to Rwanda or Tanzania, you don't you no longer have to depend on no shipping on, on this long time span you're gonna take to deliver your product. You can get this done in a, like that, less than a day, you have a product on deck. So, cut costs, 
help the citizens to pay lesser products, help the businesses from paying more money for shipping, so that in turn lessen lessen the, the the prices of products, hopefully, which most likely they will, because the certain things are are certain products are price limited, so you can't overcharge people for certain products, not all but certain products. So the shipping company is not gonna like this. So again, this is the purpose of Africa. And this is why the West is pushing so hard to get rid of Africa. Get rid of, my bad, China out of Africa. So yeah, thanks for watching. As I always don't know, it's a Washington SXM podcast. Tell a friend, tell a friend. Like, share, comment, and subscribe. If you don't know who this is, peace, one love. Boom.